in section, section 3.7, he considered the Bessel equation, which come from the radial part of the Laplace equation in central coordinate. So uh, the solution for the Bessel equation or Bessel function. So this, and then he had uh, he has the the series solution for those uh, Bessel function, and uh, the he just have a few steps. So let me show you uh, how to get through all the uh, derivation. So let's start from writing down the Bessel equation. So this is a uh, equation of 3.77. So d square all. So this all is just supposedly for the radial part, dx square, then plus one over x dr dx plus one minus u square over x square times r equals to zero. So this is the Bessel equation. So to get the Bessel series, uh, we assume a certain form. So let's assume our, uh, let's see Jackson's form. So our is uh, sum over j from zero to infinity, a sub j, xj plus a, uh, coefficient or, or factor alpha to be determined. Okay, so uh, that's the form. So the idea is to substitute this into the equation and find out the uh, relationship between all the coefficients so that we can write down a serious solution for the this solution. Okay. And so now to substitute the inside, so we need to take derivative. So uh, uh, we can do it one at a time. You have the uh, the r dx and d square r dx square. Okay, so uh, so d r dx. It's just um, the as usual, so it's just straightforward derivatives. You have uh, j plus alpha a sub j x j plus alpha minus one. Okay, so that's the that's dr dx. But uh, after we substitute, we need to multiply. And this is divided by x. But uh, actually, finally, I would like to just multiply the whole equation by x squared. So, so the first term with have x squared, second term with x times dr dx, the third term with x squared minus mu squared r. Okay, so I'll finally need to x dr dx. So that would be exactly the same, except that uh, I'll get which of this minus one. Okay, just x to the power, power of j plus alpha. Okay, so that's uh, for the middle term. So for the first term, you need the d square or dx square. So take one more derivative. So j plus alpha. Huh? So one more derivative, we pull out this factor, j plus alpha minus one. Then a sub j, x to the j plus alpha minus two. Okay. And this is for here, but now I'll, I will multiply by x square. So I need x square, d square r, d x square. Again, this is just uh, get rid of the the alpha minus two in the power becomes as a j x j plus alpha. Okay, so that's uh, the first term. 
Now the third term you just multiply by x squared of r, and then uh, the other term is just multiply mu square. Multiply mu square will just give you exactly this one, just say oh, mu square. And when you multiply x squared by r, you multiply x squared of r, you get, uh, xj plus alpha plus two. And uh, so this, so of the, all the terms, this one is different with a power, j plus alpha plus two. And every other term have a uh, x to the j plus alpha. So one, one way to make it easier to get you know, all the equation is to shift the uh, j so that uh, you uh, have the form of the x is to power also power x uh, to the power j plus alpha. So what we can do is to shift it. Uh, so instead of j from, because now when j equals zero, a is zero, right? Uh, then, uh, the lowest order term is alpha plus two, right? So uh, what we actually, if it becomes j plus alpha, so you start from j is from two instead of j from zero, j from two to alpha, then you have a to the j minus two, and then you have x to the power of j plus alpha. Okay, so this, the lowest order term become r over plus two, same as here, r over plus two is the lowest order term and multiplied by a zero. If j is two, the a zero. So this is, uh, you shifted the summation from two instead of uh, zero. Okay, so you can now substitute everything into here. So, and now you have two extra term. So all these other summations are sum from j from zero to infinity. So the j equals to zero and j equals to one terms are different from j equals to two uh, onward. Okay, so you can you can write down the j equals zero term and j equals to one term separately. <clears throat> For j equals zero term, you have so basically the first time at this term and plus this term, and then minus mu square times this term, okay? And all the terms are proportional to aj times xj plus alpha. So all these are just common factor. You can put it out. So, so finally, the equation for j equals to zero, what you have is, uh, J plus alpha, J plus alpha minus one, the first term, and then plus J plus alpha. Okay. And then minus mu square equals to zero. Okay. Now, this one, you can uh, simplify it. So you have j plus alpha here. You have j plus alpha times j plus alpha minus one. So you, this j plus alpha times the minus one cancel with this one. So, and, and j is zero. So basically it's just zero. So we can set all the j to zero. So that implied uh, uh, alpha square minus new square equals to zero. So now this, this gives us a condition, just alpha equals to mu square or alpha equals to plus or minus mu. So this alpha here can be mu or minus mu. Okay, that's from the first equation. J equals to zero equation for J equals to one. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. The same thing actually is the same equation if it's just j equals to one. Okay, because after you substitute everything, you get exactly the same equation. But now 
is uh, this is multiplied by a zero. So this is assume a zero, not equal to zero. Okay. Now the when j is equals to one, so this becomes one plus alpha times alpha. So alpha times one plus alpha. Okay. And the other one is also one plus alpha. So you have one plus alpha times one plus alpha. This becomes one plus alpha square minus mu square. Now you multiply by a one. That equals to zero. Okay. And because alpha is equals to mu square, alpha alpha square is equal to mu square. So so mu square is alpha square. So this one becomes a. Uh, uh, I mean, this the in, inside the bracket would not be zero. So in order to satisfy the second equation, so you can choose uh, a one to zero. Okay. So now you choose a one to zero. So you start from a zero, then the then the a one will be zero. The next term will be a a two. Okay, uh, so that uh, can satisfy the second uh, equation. Well, you is another choice. Of course, uh, you can choose a zero is zero to satisfy the first equation, and a one non zero. Then one plus alpha squared is just mu square, and the the effect is just to shift the uh, index of this uh, summation. So basically, you get the same equation out of it. So that uh, the, so what we choose here is still a general choice. Okay. So uh, now the for all j, other j, over j greater equals two. So now you have exactly the same. Basically, exactly of this, exactly the same of this one. Multiply by a sub j. So basically, that one simplified to j plus alpha square minus mu square times a sub j. And then, so that's take this term, this term, and uh, this term. Finally, you have this, this term. Okay. This term will give you will be uh, using this one, so and then we we'll have plus uh, a j minus two equals to zero. Okay, so that uh, that's the idea, and so uh, what we have is the a. Recurrence relation, so you have a j uh, equals to a minus of uh, a j minus two divided by this factor. Okay, and this factor is j plus alpha square minus mu square, but mu square is just alpha square. Okay, so uh, we can have the j plus alpha square minus alpha square becomes j plus uh, two alpha, or uh, no, alpha square, you have a minus alpha square. Uh, so, so you have uh, j square, right? And then, no, uh, no, J plus alpha square minus alpha J plus two alpha and then the times J because this become this is A square minus B square so it become A plus B times A minus B so that becomes uh, J plus one is J the other is uh, J plus two alpha okay so that is uh, the Recurrence relation. So, so when j is uh, when j is two, then j minus two is zero. So a zero is not zero. So a zero will give you a two. 
then use the same relation A2, it could be A4 and, and so on. So that those uh, will be non-zero. However, if J is uh, three, then three minus two is one, A1 is zero. So A1 is zero, A3 is zero, and all the odd is zero. So, so AJ equals zero. So you have AJ equals zero for all J is odd, okay? And so this relationship uh, will be non-zero of J equals to two, four, six, all the even number except uh, zero. Zero is just given by here. So chosen will be, be non-zero, okay? So now we want to use the recurrent relations to get a more direct expression of the order coefficient a sub j. So we can use the this recurrence relation to give us an expression. So because you start with an a j, then uh, you get a j minus, then using this relation, you get this times a j minus two. You use this again, you get uh, multiplied by a j minus four and so on all the way down to a sub zero, okay? So each time you do that, you get a minus one here. Actually, before we do that, uh, because these are all, all even uh, integer. So we, what's, one thing you can do is to, uh, e let's j equals to two times another index. And uh, we actually can just st still call that uh, uh, J or now it becomes J moved to two J. So instead of writing it this way, you can write A to the two A sub two J equals to minus. Now this become two J minus two or two times J minus one. Okay, and this is uh, J becomes two uh, J, right? And then this 2j, you have to about get two out, so you get 4j. And this is, uh, becomes j plus alpha. Okay. And then, so now j is from all the positive integers, e1, j, 2j, 3. Okay. And for the zero term, it's still the same, the zero multiplied by two is still zero. Okay, so, uh, so we'll use that. So a two a to the two j will give you a times two j minus one, a, and then use this again. You get multiplied to uh, a to the two j minus two, and so on, all the way to a sub zero. So each time we do that, we uh, we get a minus sign. So all together, you have a minus one to the power j. Okay, and likewise the four. Everyone, every time you do that, you multiply by four. So you have a uh, altogether four to the power of J, but then four, you can write it at two to the two, so two to two J, okay? So, and then J, the next one you have a uh, multiply by J minus one and so on. So all together you have a J factorial, okay? This J plus alpha because alpha can be any real number, so alpha is new or minus new. So the next time you're multiplied by j plus alpha minus one and so on and so forth. So to get that, actually we can use the gamma function. This becomes a gamma of j plus alpha plus one, okay? And then all the way to the last term, which is j is zero, so you you multiply by j to the alpha plus one. Okay, and finally you multiply by a zero. Okay, so that would be the general form of the, uh, the a to the, the j, a sub two j coefficient all the way in terms of a zero. You get this form. Now, finally, you can choose a, a value of a zero. That's that uh, by convention, you can choose a number so that you get the final form of the 
the the the what you define as your basal function, and in fact by convention, you can write down the the solution R now is given by this form, right? Given by this form, so you can just write like if you choose uh, alpha equals to new new so j new x will be basically this one right basically this factor j plus new and then sum over all this uh, a to j but now we are summing over j but this become a to the 2j which is uh, from this factor and you choose a zero such that uh, finally we will choose that such that uh, if nu is zero, so we define nu when x equals zero, j zero equals to one. We use that uh, as the uh, as a way to fix the value of a zero. Uh, this uh, the constant, okay? And the idea is this. Uh, you have this multiplied by x to the 2j power, okay, multiply by it, because every time it's 2j, and then you have the new, so 2j plus new power, and so you have a sum over j from zero to infinity, so you have minus one j, okay, and then you have j factorial and gamma, J plus alpha, my, alpha becomes new. This is for alpha equals to new. J so plus new plus one. And then you have this X to the 2J term, but actually because you have a two to the 2J, you, you absorb that X to 2J. Okay. And then uh, actually this 2j plus, R plus new, you have a new because finally you have a uh, R over, you have j plus R over, 2j plus R over, so it's 2j plus new now, okay? And that means that you're fixing the a0. So a0 have, uh, a0 will give you um, one of, uh, because finally you have two to the two J plus new. So you you need the two J, you need the two to the new power and gamma alpha plus one. Okay, so, so that is uh, the choice of A0. And that one, uh, you see that if you, you set new is zero and set, uh, x is zero, so nu is zero, and for x is zero, all the j non-zero term will be zero, so only j equals zero is zero, so both j and nu are zero, so gamma one, gamma one is just one, okay, so, and then well, everything is one, so that will give you one, okay, so that uh, means uh, you are choosing this factor, so that a is zero, the zero or the basal function at x equals zero is one. Okay, so that is uh, the final form of the basal function. Okay, so I think uh, let look, let's look that up uh, in Jackson. The equation number. So, so this is uh, equation three. 3.82, okay? So this is J mu, J nu, and in this consideration, actually, if you choose alpha equals the negative nu, so that the whole thing is still uh, applied, so, so for alpha equals minus nu, you can have the same expansion, except that you're changing nu to minus nu, so everything the same, except uh, in the gamma function, you have j minus nu plus one, and then 
and the factor x over two to the two j minus nu. Okay, and this is uh, equation 3.83. Okay, so, so these are the two series solution for j nu and j minus nu, and obviously, these two uh, are linearly independent except when nu, uh, nu is integer, right? So uh, because uh, if nu is non-integer, you cannot put one series to the form of the other series, okay? Only when nu is integer. So when nu is integer, when nu is an uh, even integer, then uh, all the um, factors all the terms are proportional to x to the even power. If nu is a is a is an odd integer, then uh, the all the power would be a odd power of x in the series. Okay, so but uh, when, uh, in that case, if um, if the nu is a uh, if nu is just uh, an integer, the two will not be um, will not be linearly independent because uh, you you put nu is integer. Let's, let's see if I have space to write it down. So so j nu j m if you have j m if nu is m m is integer. So this is just uh, Summing up from uh, j from zero to infinity minus one j, okay, and then you have j to the factor j factorial, and then gamma to the uh, j plus m plus one, and then you have x to the two. 2j plus m, 2j, this is 2 plus m. Okay, so that is, uh, and I assume, I assume m is greater than zero, okay, in this situation. Now from j minus m, so basically this is the same thing. So you have, uh, you write j minus m, so you have not j alpha is uh, nu is minus m. So j this Bessel function j minus m. So summing over j from zero to infinity minus one to the j power. So what is different is this uh, now this becomes j to the j a uh, gamma j minus m plus one. And then we have this x over two and two j minus m power. Okay. And then uh, that's, this form, it doesn't look like this form. So this is a two j plus m, this is two j minus m. And what you can do is uh, to shift it, shift the j and let let's just let's j summing from minus m because when this when you write it this way when j is zero you start with this power at minus m you can you want to write it like j uh, two j plus m right and when uh, x is zero so, so you are you have uh, m here so and if you start with uh, j is equals to minus m. So minus m times two plus m, then you will start for minus m. Okay, it's basically a shift it down. So you can write j to the minus m equals to sum over j from minus m to infinity. Okay, now the the j we all shifted, so you have minus one to the j plus m. 
because when j is minus m, you get back to zeros, which is uh, the original ones from zero. So this becomes j plus m factorial. And then you have a gamma function. Okay, so j becomes j plus m, then you cancel with this m. So become j plus one. And then it will be x over two to the two j plus m. Okay, so formally all the power of this, this one is the same as this one. Okay, except that uh, now, uh, now this one is not, uh, now this one is uh, uh, summing from j is minus m to infinity, but then uh, this is summing from j is just zero to infinity. So it seems like you have more terms, but then when j is negative, so all the way from j is minus one to, uh, to uh, minus m. So you have the uh, property that the gamma function is uh, singular. So a one of a gamma function is zero. <clears throat> so you have the property, let's just write it down here. So, so one of a gamma function. If you get to a limit of c goes to and pause the integer that equals to zero for n is zero, one, two. Okay, so, so for all this uh, integer value of zero in the argument of gamma function is singular, so one over gamma is zero. So when j is from minus one to all the way to minus m, this gamma function will make the whole value zero. So all those uh, extra terms, looks like extra term actually is uh, zero. So then uh, you can just write down, uh, write down sum from zero to infinity. Now you, when it is from zero to infinity, this gamma j plus one, so all the j's are positive of zero, that becomes j factorial. And j plus m factorial becomes this gamma j plus m plus one in this situation. So this becomes uh, the same as jm, but you have the extra minus one to the m factor and then jm, okay? This is j minus m. So you see that uh, j minus m is, uh, is related to j, jm by this relationship. So they are not independent. So, uh, so this is uh, coming from the series ex expansion of the Bessel function. So we'll stop here. Um,